Oh shit! In this documentary, I'm gonna share my full experience. Five days of racing, pushing myself to the absolute limit. I'll talk about my bike, clothing, my nutrition, all that stuff you need to know when you want to do an event like this. What's up guys, what's up cycling fanatics? Welcome back to another documentary of my Haute Route experience. Look at that, amazing views. Yes, yes, after the Dolomites last year, I wanted to ride Haute Route again. So I just finished stage one out of five here in the Pyrenees and today was crazy. I got sprayed with cow shit. Shit on the road. I almost went into the ravine. Oh. I climbed like a maniac. I pushed everything out. I'm starting to get a gap. Currently second position. And I had a really good end result. But first let's go to yesterday, the travel day from Amsterdam to Bordeaux and then the shuttle to Biarritz. Oh, I made it to Bordeaux, just waiting on the bags. The bike is already in Biarritz. I gave it to a friend who's also riding, Ruben. He brought it there by car. So I'm waiting for the luggage to be put on the belt and then I can find my shuttle to Biarritz. Biarritz was the hosting town of stage one. So in Haute there's a bit of logistic management. You're riding a stage every day, point to point. So all your bags and all your stuff that you don't have on your bike is being transported from hotel to hotel. So when you arrive, they give you a big bag, they give you a race bag, and you're gonna transfer all your stuff into that bag. On contrary to last year, I do have some experience now, so I know what to do. Picked up the bag and the race bag. It's been a long day already, waking up at four o'clock this morning, but I do want to go for a little, uh, a little spin. Rider briefing is tonight, pass the party, sleep, and then race time. I pack my bags in a certain way, so it was easy to transfer my stuff. And then you drop your bike box at the truck and they will drive it to the end stop. You pick up your race bag, which has a lot of tags, your plate for your bike or your bib number for your jersey and a couple tags you put on your bag so they know it's your bag and you can find it back. I feel like it's similar number as last year, but I can't remember. Look, what a ride, the bike. Yes. The bike I'm using is the Windspace SLC. It's got the Loon Performance Hypers, the new 2023 edition Hypers, just over seven kilos with pedals. So I'm very happy to bring this bike here on the race since it's a climbing race and I'm not really a climber body. I had to bring a light bike. I went for a short spin just to, you know, stretch out the legs. So now I'm on a random loop. It's a nice bike lane passing a river. Today's a bit shitty weather. It's kind of raining, but it's not cold, so it's okay. I was doubting if I wanted to go for this ride, but... A few moments later. I thought it was just a few drops. Yeah, now it's raining. Not good. Okay, definitely got wet on that ride, but uh, I did the same thing last year. I got wet and cold the day before the race. It didn't influence my performance in a negative way. So let's rock and roll and hope for the best. Hope for sun. All right, uh, I'm in the hotel. I said the same thing last year. Travel always brings a bit of stress. And even though I travel so many times a year for work, when I have to wait in line for three hours in passenger security, while my flight leaves in an hour and a half. Amsterdam airport right now is complete chaos. I took the first train to the airport. And by the time I arrived to the airport, the lines were so long that I'm gonna miss my flight anyways. Three hour waiting time for the security check. Okay, so I've been in the line and I think I skipped at least half of it. So it's kind of crazy. Flight leaves in 20 minutes, so I gotta hurry to the gate. So yeah, I'm happy I'm here. I've been stacking carbs all day long. Mm. Doing a proper carbo loading today. 10 grams of carbs for every kilogram of body weight, so it's 800 grams of carbs. Pancakes on the plane, pasta on the shuttle bus. Now I'm eating oatmeal and I've got another container with rice. There's already a lot of stuff that actually can go wrong. So you need to control the stuff that you can control. All my food prepared for today. I'm eating all of it. I don't have my bike. Is that weird? 
yes, it is weird. It feels weird. I'm racing tomorrow, but I don't have my bike with me. Hot route has got you covered with everything. So tomorrow, the start is actually not here. Tomorrow, we're gonna take a bus together to the start line, and they also transport our bikes. So, and then tomorrow, they, they drop it off at the starting line. So uh, I'm gonna prepare everything tonight, and then just put everything on the bike tomorrow before the race, I guess, I don't know. So I was trying to get, a, get to bed early, but there's just so much stuff you need to think about, so much stuff you need to prepare before you're gonna race stage one. So we went to the rider briefing, the pasta party, big pasta party, and this morning, 5.15 was the alarm. <laughs> All right, alarm went off at a quarter past five. <sighs> day one, big day, big day. I prepared my stuff last night, so I've got everything ready to go right here. I just need to put on my race kit and then we'll walk to the meeting point where we're gonna catch the bus to the start line. <sighs> this is my race bag. This is gonna be at the finish. So I put in my recovery shake and some stuff that I really want right after the race. And then everything else goes in the other bag and the organization will transport that bag to the next hotel because we're already sleeping in another hotel tonight. So that's it. It's quarter to six, you're gonna get food. Leave the hotel at six o'clock. The bus is going to leave quarter past six. So the shuttle took another like hour to the start of the actual race. We arrive at the bottom of the Pyrenees. Actually, it was bus country. I'm feeling good. Legs are good. I got sick in the beginning of the week, but I got rid of my cold and I was ready for stage one. It's 7.30, still an hour to the start. So we have plenty of time to get everything uh, ready to go. All the bikes are in here. Thank you. I said this before, but Haute Route, it's a climbing event. It's basically the Tour de France for amateurs. Stage one was 153 kilometers with 3,700 meters of elevation. That's a lot. Three massive climbs, the Landerre, Bagargui, and the Pout especially the Pout finishing at 1,700 meters after 150K. Big ride today with a long valley semi-flat section in the middle. I went in this Haute Route, into the Haute Route Pyrenees this year in a completely different way than last year. Last year in the Dolomites, I had no idea. I had never ridden a five day race before. So I actually, I went there just to finish. This year, I put the bar way higher. This year, I just wanted to start fast, hard and give it a big, big go on stage one. There's only one guy with a golden plate. The winner oh, yes, from man. last year, How Marco. How are you? Defying the ready? laws of yeah? gravity. Right, Good, man. right now I'm getting nervous. Defying yeah, the laws yeah, of gravity. Little bit. So look after yourself, but also... Three, two, one, go and go! Definitely started right now. First climb, going with the flow. Oh yeah. So yeah, 
yeah, first climb, it was not an easy climb. First climb had sections of 10, 11, 12%. I stayed with that group for a while, but at some point I, I did have to ride my own pace. I was pushing 400 watts average and I wasn't able to be with the first group. So I had to pace it because if I wouldn't do that, then I would not be able to finish. It's definitely ripped apart. Nine minutes in the climb, 400 watts average. It's about my limit. I'm used to, you know, when it rains, you get sprayed, right, in a race. When you're in a peloton, you get this spray of those wheels. Here in the Pyrenees, you get sprayed with cow shit. Literally. It wasn't like you could avoid these patches of shit. No, there was shit all over the place. Like, the entire road was covered with shit, and I just, everywhere. <laughs> So I got to the top of the first climb in a pretty good group. It was crazy how on this climb, and especially in the descent, you would just go and you would hit a wall of fog. We could not see anything. It was just... And the road was very, very rough. There was gravel on the tarmac. There was narrow roads. There was shit all over the place. There were cows on the road, sheep on the road, and there were very tight bends. And man, this was tricky. I mean, I'm a pretty good descender, but this descent was tricky. On some of these sections in the descent, I was really pushing it, maybe put some pressure on these guys that I was with, because I can go down pretty fast and they had to push hard to stay with me. And then on the uphills, I would let them pull, try to stay behind them, uh, draft a little bit where I could. And then at the top of Baragui, the timing stopped. Horses.
dropped my uh, my bottle just uh, located the top. We're at the top. This uh, stop feeding zone is not timed, so we can fill up. We're gonna regroup probably. I already see the leaders, so I'm not too far behind. So that's uh, that's good. I filled up my stuff pretty quickly, and then I went down fast because I wanted to catch up with those first couple guys because I knew that flat section was coming and I thought they would be a good group to stay with. I'm kind of disappointed when I hear that certain sections are not timed. The descent is actually my strength. But on this occasion, I could really, you know, understand why, because there was massive road construction, there was a lot of mud on the streets, it was just a very, very bad condition. We're at the neutral, uh part still and with the first 10 riders there's gonna be a short little climb and then we're gonna go into, into that valley with a long long flat so 75k of flat this is a good group to stay in at the bottom of the descent that's where the timing restarted and we had a pretty big group but they were just going very very slow they were going so slow that at some point I just you know I didn't even I hardly pedaled and I rolled away from them. And I'm shooting my Instagram story like, hey, I'm doing very good, I'm leading the race and blah, blah, blah. Quick update. Currently I'm leading the race. Pretty awesome. I'm not pushing, I'm not hardly even pedaling, but I'm just rolling off the front. So uh, that's how slow the group is going at the moment. Pretty sure we're gonna pick up the pace any second. So I'm just noodling here at the front. So yeah, going well. Already burned a lot of energy, that's for sure. And then two guys, they jump towards me and I get on their wheel and we start going. And another guy comes and he joins us. That's when we hammered it. Crazy enough, nobody followed, and we four guys, we started to break away. And this was perfect, because in that group were a lot of climbers, a lot of light, light guys, and if I could put some time on them in the valley, that meant that I was gonna have a little buffer to ride up that Portulay at the end. So one of those guys of the other group, he jumped towards us, so now we have five guys. All these guys are motivated. Actually, it went pretty, pretty good. We had a good combination. Me and then another guy, Will, two big guys. So we could do the pulling on the downhills and on the flats. And then the other three guys were relatively light and they pulled at the climbs. In the meanwhile, I was trying to coach them a little bit, like positions, rotations. Will, when you're in the front, try to ride in the middle of the lane. It's easier for us. We, we started like a diesel, you know, when you start it, it's like when it starts going, it started going and we never stopped. We're 80k in the ride. Felix just had a text from his dad. We've got two minutes and 10 seconds on the rest of the pack. We are doing phenomenal.
minutes, became four minutes, became five minutes. At some point, we made up 10 minutes in that valley. That was awesome. So then we started the last climb, the Putale, and we started riding. It starts very, very easy. It's not a very steep gradient. And then it just gets steeper and steeper. How long is it to the top? Hour. One hour? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, More? Uh, hour, hour 20. Okay. 12, 12, 12, 12, 12. 10. Eight. Eight. Sank? Five? We're talking every language together. We're mixing it up. <laughs> Guys were falling off. So we started with five, then it went to four, we went to three. Broad, the English guy, his watts per kilo were in his favor. Okay, so Rod took off a couple minutes ago. I kept pace and I rode away from wheel, starting to get a gap. Currently second position. This is crazy. I was riding in second position of this race I'm gonna repeat that. I was riding in a Hogue Root event in second position. That gave me so much extra motivation, but I'm really, really dying. Approaching the Portelay, I could see on the head unit, I was burning about 180 grams of glycogen for every hour we were riding. So I already burned like 700 grams. That's a lot. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, I'm using Eat My Ride that provides a live data field showing your glycogen burn and depletion according to your power output. I'll talk more about this in episode 2, but if you want a detailed explanation, check out the full video I did recently about this amazing new feature. I started having a deficit which was approaching 400. That's a lot. I had a lot, a lot of juice in the tank, but it started to reduce. I started at 300 watts. I thought I could keep 300 to the top, but the 300 went to down to 280 to 260. At some point, I was pushing 230 watts, and I was having a hard time. I I, I started to swivel a bit on the bike, really, really bad actually. I was really starting to be at the end of my energy there. 5k go. I'm seeing black spots and I started looking back. I mean, I could look up, but I, the first guy was out of sight. I didn't see anyone yet, but I, in my mind, I, I, I felt like these guys were approaching fast because I was just going so slow. I've got uh, no words right now. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good, good job. It's not the Stelvio finish of last year, which is like 2700, but it's still a lot. 1700 meters is definitely noticeable, but I managed. I pushed through and I got over the finish line as second. <sighs> I. Uh... I just need to sit for a little bit because I think if I if I descend now I'm I'm gonna die because I've I've lost control 
I was zigzagging up towards the finish. I'm just really, really dead. I finished all my food, all my water, just approaching the top, so everything is gone. So that's pretty good fuel management. Now we have a 7k to descend, like a transition to the to the village. Good job, man. Hey, man. So after arriving here at the Hodrood village in Formigal, we went to the hotel, fantastic hotel, very, very beautiful, uh, with an amazing view of this valley. And then I went to the rider briefing. I thought I was second. Uh, turns out I was not second, I was fourth. How is that possible? Well, that's the thing with these timed and non-timed segments. You don't really know who is where in the race. But, you know, the feeling was pretty cool that I was second, but I wasn't. Tomorrow? Failure is not an option. Tomorrow I'm gonna smash it. Of course I'm gonna smash it.